So quick disclaimer on this video and maybe even a slight spoiler, I refer to Google's drone app as Wing. That is not the name of the drone app. That is the division that is developing the drone app. The actual name of the drone app is Open Sky. I already recorded everything and I don't really want to go back and do it again just to replace one word with the correct term. So every time I say it in this video, I am going to put text that says Open Sky to correct myself with a visual. But just so you know, getting into the video, I am an idiot and I use the wrong word to describe the name of Google's drone app. What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Today's episode, we're going to be covering two announcements that came out of the drone world last week that I think are really going to shake things up and sort of shift the balance of things as they've been for about the past two years in the drone world. But before we get into those, I do want to bring you up to speed on two things that I've either talked about or alluded to on my channel in the past few videos. First, I made a video on the new trust from the FAA. That's the recreational UAV safety test that they implemented that you must take if you want to fly recreationally. And that doesn't just go for recreational pilots, hobbyists, if you will. That also includes part 107 pilots. If you are a part 107 holder and you intend on flying your drone for anything outside of commercial use, you have to take the trust pass it and then carry your certificate with you in order to fly for fun or leisure. You can find the video where I talk about that up in this corner right now. Go ahead and click that if you want to watch that video to learn a little bit more. If this is the first time hearing about it, I'm sure it's not because it was a huge deal when it happened. But I took that, I passed it, and I got my certificate. That's the update for that. And if you haven't taken that already, just hear me out on this. I know that it's sort of a pain in the neck, especially if you really didn't want to take it in the first place, but it's super easy. Very commonsensical is a word or a term that I would use to describe it. And if you've been flying for any length of time, at least flying responsibly, then you're gonna know all of the information on this test anyway. They're really just checking to make sure that you can be held accountable, you understand what's going on, going on with the airspace, how to safely navigate it, and how to safely operate your drone. So just take it. It really doesn't take that long and it's very, very easy. Once you have your certificate, print it out and have it with you at all times when you fly recreationally because with new legislation that came through from the FAA, you are now required to present either your Part 107 or now your trust certificate if a police officer or other government official asks to see it while you're operating your drone. It is a necessity necessity at this point. So make sure you take it, make sure you print that certificate out and you have it with you moving forward. The second item I have is more of just a formatics thing. You're actually watching past Chris. So I recorded this video last week because this is when all of this stuff is going on. These two announcements that we're going to get into in just a moment here. I'm in my hometown right now for my sister's wedding. We're preparing for it. We're getting ready to party, have a great time, and celebrate the marriage between my sister Rachel and my soon-to-be brother-in-law Colton. I sort of already alluded to that by going to his bachelor party in Nashville, which, by the way, if you want to watch my Nashville vlog, you can go ahead and click on the little link that just popped up right there and see all of the aerial footage as well as the ground footage that I captured during my time in Nashville. It was a really great time. But anyway, I am currently in Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania, getting ready for my sister's wedding. And I didn't want to leave you guys out in the cold with content. I'm trying to do a video per week, if not more. So I wanted to make sure I had something for you. So I did the vlog from Nashville last week and I pushed the topics that we're talking about today up to this week, because even though they're sort of interesting and important to talk about, they're not urgent. So. That segues nicely into the rest of this video. Let's talk about the two major announcements coming out of the drone world last week. So the first one is a new player in the game. They're not really new. It's a new drone from Parrot. The Anafi AI was just announced as Parrot's next enterprise solution for drones. And let me tell you, this one is a game changer. All things considered, this drone looks stacked and seems to be Parrot's answer to the likes of the Mavic 2 Enterprise, Autel Evo 2 Pro, Sky DO X2, and other commercial grade drones. 
It's capable of shooting at 4K with a 48 megapixel camera and an HDR10 color profile that will result in brilliant imagery. Perhaps the most impressive and game-changing feature to this drone is its 4G connectivity. This feature means that you will be able to fly the Anafi AI with limitless range if you have a 4G connection available to you. Parrot says this will empower the pilot with limitless range and keep flights free from interference, which is a huge safety feature. It also appears that Parrot is stepping up the Anafi's offerings for photogrammetry by implementing hardware or firmware that makes data collection more precise. It's also a strong possibility that Parrot is offering its own mapping and modeling software and or shooting mode, much like Skydio offers with the 2 and X2. Parrot is also beefing up the data transfer security and the Anafi's ability for autonomous flight. These implementations are direct shots at the likes of DJI and Skydio and will allow the Anafi to become a more serious competitor in the commercial market. The price on the Anafi AI has not yet been made public. There is a form on Parrot's website where you can ask for more information. I filled that form out. I have a request for more information in with Parrot because I'm very interested about this drone and all of the new features and hardware that's in it that's going to make it a serious competitor for the likes of DJI, Autel, and Sky Dio. But considering the previous enterprise solution from Parrot, the Anafi USA, was around $7,000 at its peak, I would expect the AI to come in on the high end. Now, the big differentiation between the two is it appears that the AI does not have thermal while the USA did. And that's quite the price distinction. When you add that thermal camera, that's some pretty high tech stuff. So it's going to drive the cost of that drone up. There are a lot of new features, including that 4G connectivity with the AI that I think will drive the price up. But I would expect anywhere between four and $6,000 for the Parrot Anafi AI. It is going to be well worth the money though as an enterprise solution. So I'm really excited about this one and I can't wait to hear back from Parrot. Moving on, Google announced last week that it was officially breaking into the drone app market in the United States by releasing Wing on the iOS and Android platforms. Now, Google had already released the beta version of Wing for testing in Australia in 2019. It is now officially available in the United States. And as soon as I heard that I could download it, I went to the app market and did just that. And I've got to tell you, first impression, this thing's pretty slick. The ecosystem that Google has built is off of its Google Maps interface. So they already sort of had a little bit of a head start when it comes to building that ecosystem. But the drone relevant overlays that they've implemented are extremely intuitive. And I'm actually impressed with some added features that they have as well. You're taken to what is essentially a Google Maps interface, except instead of just Google Maps, there is an overlay for airspace categories and restrictions, as well as even obstacle notifications. For example, a little bit north of my location, you'll see a blue overlay. When I tap on that blue overlay, it highlights it and tells me what type of obstacles are in that region. You'll see here that on Prince and TAP 156219, there are power lines that I need to be watching out for. These compose both both an electrical signal malfunction with my drone if I get too close, as well as just a physical obstruction to my flight path. So really cool stuff that Google implemented. It's not foolproof, not everything is included in this in terms of obstacles that you need to look out for, but the fact that they're thinking ahead this way means that Google has big things in store for Wing. The app also tells you about TFRs and special use airspace statuses in any given area, but the best and possibly most useful part of this app is the ability to apply for LANC, which for those of you that might not know what that means, it's low altitude authorization and notification capability. You'll see here that you do need to sign in with your Google account in order to request LANC, but having the ability to apply for LANC in controlled airspace through Wing gives it a level of usability that puts it on par with the likes of AirMap, <gasps> Aloft, and Before You Fly. Now, even though I'm impressed, Am I surprised that Google came hot out the gate with a drone app? No. If there was going to be any company that brought the heat breaking into the drone app market, it was going to be Google. And quite frankly, even though I'm just learning about Wing, I didn't know that it was even released in Australia in 2019. 
I gotta say, I'm really psyched about this. The intuitive programming that's in Wing really makes me excited about implementing this app into my flight planning and eventually into the actual conduction of my flights. Only time will tell if I use it as my main resource for flight planning, but I gotta say, it looks promising. And I think with the intuitive interface that it has, this is gonna really give apps like AirMap, <gasps> aloft and before you fly a run for their money. Now, Google makes it very, very clear that at this point, they are still working out the kinks with Wing. So you're going to want to pair this with another app that has a more reliable interface when it comes to identifying obstacles, airspaces, and how you can navigate around restricted airspaces. However, and you can quote me on this, it will not be long before Wing shoots straight to the top and just surpasses all of the competition. I'm very, very confident in that. But what do you think about these announcements? About Parrot? About Wing? <laughs> or maybe even about both. Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, if you liked this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It helps my video out a lot when it comes to getting out into the Google algorithm and being recommended for other viewers that might be interested in drone related content. If you really liked this video and you love drone related content, consider subscribing to my channel. We are on the quest to 1000 subscribers. And as of the recording of this video, we're about 149 subscribers away. We're at 851. I just need a little bit more of a push and we'll get to that thousand mark, no problem at all. But I can't do it without you. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. And, and don't think that I don't realize that most of you watching this aren't subscribed to this channel because I know, in fact, a majority of you watching this are not subscribed to my channel. So there's really no excuse not to scroll down after I'm done with my spiel, hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with what's going on with my channel and the world of drones. This is your second reminder to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and I am out of here.